Welcome back again, Typhus here. And last time we did a couple of hunts in the Giza Plains in the Dry, defeated the Cluckatrice, went off to Bujerba, uh, did the hunt there and picked up a couple of things there. And now we'll be off to Jahara, land of the Gareth. Now, uh, normally when you, get, when you play here, ooh, yikes, nope, nope, nope. Uh, normally when you play here, you can't access the land of the Gareths until you've had the rain season uh, come, but uh, in the open world randomizer, I could have just uh, gone straight through during the dry season. Just bringing, keeping the mini-map up there. Ooh, uh, lost. But uh, I've gone through the wet just because I had a couple of other things I could do in the wet. Alright, dead wolf. So in Jahara, uh, what we'll be doing, there is one hunt in the Osmone Plains that we can do. That will be easy enough to do. Uh, the Enkelados, that hunt happens to drop an item, so that could be something useful. Uh, if it happens to drop its uh, Eremonia leaf, then <laughs> I can at least hand that in. Uh, there is also the Hen Mines that I'm hoping to get a good chunk of the way through. The, if you can get through the hen mines, that's really good because the boss in there also counts as a reward for the um, clan primer. Not to mention a bucket load of XP. Uh, there's one or two hunts in the hen mines itself that I can do. Uh, there is... It's not the Ishtab. I it might be the Ishtab or the... Yeah, it's the Ishtab. I believe is what it's called. Um, that one is relatively easy, not too much of a detour. Uh, I am heading in the right way still, yes. Cool. He's easy enough to do. Wait, whoa, Jesus. Uh, so the Ishtar boss. Uh, there is the Piso demon. Uh, I don't think I'll be quite uh, strong enough to be able to deal with that guy. And then once you click to clear the hen mines, you get an auto teleport to the Eric village, which is super nice. Oh, I still don't escape the rains in here. <laughs> okay, no treasures in this area. Awesome. I am just going to leg it because this area is full of flying things. And because I've de equipped the spear from Barsh in favor of the ninja swords, uh, that does mean that no one can hit the buggers. So, uh, yeah, they don't, from memory, have anything particularly good for drops. All right, well, I'm going to quickly change Bash whilst I remember. Uh, and I'm going to set up a, I'm going to give you an extra gambit slot. Yikes, I've not given you any gambits. I'm going to set up a gambit on Varn for stealing. Uh, reason why... Let's see, foes, HP, 100%. And get that steel. Yeah. Reason why is that there is the uh, Sky Pirate Den achievement for stealing off enemies 50 times. And uh, that will give me an additional hint with the Moogles. And then I have it set to um, HP 100%, which means that he should only uh, steal from an enemy the once before uh, Barsh gets in an attack. And look at that lovely damage of Barsh, 1500. That's pretty good. And the attack speed of that um, weapon's actually not too bad. The charge speed. Like it could be better. But it definitely could definitely be worse. All right, so head around this way. So yeah, Bash is now my main damage dealer because he's got a higher damage weapon than uh, Van, Van, which is also why I set switched Van to having the um, thieving grid, uh, thieving gambit set up. Plus now I'm getting into enemies that happen to have nice drops. The um, horsey things here. The what are they called? Mesmineer. Their iron carapaces sell for a half decent amount. And casually, when I come through this area on a normal playthrough, 
I tend to do a little bit of money farming on these guys because the, their drop is, I think it's about like 600 to 800 uh, gil each, which is pretty decent. And you can steal them and you can get them off as a drop. I do kind of wish that I'd gotten the sunny weather for this area instead of all the rains. I right, just check where I am. I've got one treasure in here. Well, I'll be coming back along the other side of this area, so I'm not going to be looking too keenly for it. And there's only one. The prince's kisses are... Oh, well, it's right there, so don't have to go hunting for it. That's rather convenient. Alright, what do we got? Traitor's bow. That's a fairly high tier bow, but neither of my dudes can use bows, and unless it's got absolutely bonkers broken attack power, it's not going to be worth it. Uh, look, lovely chocobos. The chocobo feathers are worth collecting. If you collect three chocobo feathers, that translates to a um, bizarre good. So, you could get something good out of it. Man, Barn, you are sucking at stealing from the chocobo. And the pecks of Geisel Greens could be useful. There are various uh, wild chocobos around the uh, map, around the world, that if you feed them a, a peck of greens, then uh, they become friendly and let you ride them for a little bit. So it's not quite as good as... It's a decent fast travel. It speeds you up. You can avoid enemy encounters. And you go turbo speed on the chocobo. All right. Let's tack the save crystal. Let's suss out what they happen to have for sale here. Please have some teleport crystals. I would love some teleport crystals. If not, then please have them in Erot Village. Or oh, failing that, I guess all the way to Mount Boromasis. Alright, you are my dude. Let's see, what have we got for sale? Ultima Blade. Cool. That's rubbish. Loxley. Paramana. Mage Masher. No. That's good attack power for a staff. That's even better attack power for a staff. <laughs> Alright. Uh, MP cost and a half, but no defense. Yeah, I'll pass on that. Protection from those. Yep. Uh, raise the strength on HP critical. Auto float is not too bad. Half damage. Oh, but XP is zero. No thanks. Um, I'll just have two of those just just for auto float. Uh, could be useful. Echo herbs. I'll take a couple of those. I don't have box yet. So if I get uh, thunder and break and we have our teleport crystals. Woo. Let's buy a couple of those. Uh, Serpentarius and gem steel. Those are related to bizarre goods drops. So I think you only need one Serpentarius. Let's Oh yeah, that traitor's bow. 16 attack power. Ha! Yeah, you're real rubbish. Alright. Don't want to sell those off by mistake. Let's get rid of all our excess rubbish. See, four, okay, so 400 for the iron carapace. But they're really easy to get in bulk, so they are a pretty decent money-making uh, thing for this point in the game, if you were playing through on a casual playthrough. Alright, and the rubbish things that we got from there. Alright, now we have teleport crystals. That makes getting around the map so much nicer. Hmm, that's probably rubbish. All right, and here's the monograph tutorial one. Uh, I will very quickly pop into this back area here. A reason being is that there is a treasure chest that can spawn in here, but it has not spawned, so that's fine. Oh, there's like one or two treasures that can spawn in there. So, next port of call, we'll be taking on the Enkelados. Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure it's the Enkelados um, in one of the areas. So that'll be a mark, that'll get us a bunch more XP and a bunch more LP. So I think for license gridding from this point forwards, because I've got a decent set of armor, I don't have any better armor that I'm working for at the moment. Uh, for both of the guys, uh, it's still raining, poo. Uh, for both of the guys, it's going to be a case of going for all the passive buffs, like so the things that give the attack up, things that give uh, HP up, 
So more HP, the better. Man, I, these things are loving dropping to Geisel Greens. Alright, and that. You are dead. You are dead. I'm sorry, Chocobos. You are lovely, but you are also aggressive and you do drop some okay stuff. I don't think I've ever encountered the uh, mythical uh, level 99 red Chocobo. I've never actually like specifically grinded for trying to get it to spawn. For those who don't know, the uh, level 99 Chocobo is a rare spawn that can replace any of the regular Chocobos in the plains. And as the name says, it's level 99 and super strong. So you don't want to run into it unless you're prepared. Just checking where I am going. Because I am apt to get lost on maps. It's so nice having things just casually die in one hit. Alright, so down here. Alright, do we have anything in here? We have one thing spawned. That's fine. Oh, these things don't quite die in one hit. Okay. Come on. Alright, guys. At least I can't do any damage to my dudes. But unfortunately, Vaan is not going to be terribly uh, efficient at uh, attacking anything here. Not why like one thing has got full HP. That is the slight downside of uh, having the uh, grid like that. Until something is damaged, uh, Vaan's not going to be doing any damage. Oh, nice. There's the treasure. Now, what pile of rubbish is that going to be? Oh, good job, Vaan. You managed to find a trap. Oh, that did a heck of a lot of damage to him. Alright. You kill yourself. Come down to this area and in this little area. So this is another one mark that doesn't spawn immediately upon area entry. You have to go and kill everything in the area. Again, much like the uh, Clockatrice from before. I think for most of these marks, if you actually pay attention to what the um, mark petitioner says when you accept the mark and talk to the petitioner, they do give you hints as to um, what the conditions are for some of them. It's like some of them might say, this thing was only seen in, in a fierce blizzard. Or then there is also the rather infamous uh, Behemoth King, which you have to clear two areas back to back. We've got one thing spawned in here. Two, two areas back to back. Areas which are huge and where the enemies can respawn if you're not quick enough to kill them off. So <laughs> that one is a fun one. And then once you've done all that, depleted all your MP and like running low on uh, statuses and that, the Behemoth King is uh, no pushover on his own. Right. He hits like a truck. Alright, so this should have our Enkelados spawn. Here he is. I don't expect him to be terribly much of a problem. Yeah, that... Oh, you can steal from him. Oh well. The marks don't tend to have um, good stuff. Unfortunately, this dude is so big that unless you have a ranged character, you cannot get a good view of him. You just have to sit there, look at his legs for a few minutes. Oh, not even that. Oh, he healed. But he's on slow. He's got a few arrows sticking out of his shins there. Purify. Up oh, there goes the slow. And he's immune. Oh well. It's not like it's going to matter terribly much. He's not doing any damage to my guys and... Uh, oh, my guys are kind of shredding his HP there. Oh, come on, you're one... Good job. I was going to say, you're one shot... Uh, Oh my goodness, he gave me the Aeromonia leaf? Okay. Well, that's another thing that's given the thing it's supposed to have given. I swear I was doing this randomized. The last two mark things from last time I gave the thing they were supposed to give. Like, I know I've set it to a low difficulty, so, like, that might be playing a bit into it. Because with the lower difficulty of the randomizer, it means that 
you don't have to do as many side quests, or you shouldn't have to do as many side quests um, as normal. All right, so I don't really care about you guys. We'll just head out here. So we're going back to Jahara. Hand in the quest because we've got the item that is required to hand in the in the quest. And then we'll we need to go back to Jahara anyway because we need to pick up a chocobo to access the hen mines and that happens to be where the chocobo is conveniently located. All right, back here. Ooh, camera, I'm not quite sure what you were doing there. Hi, Gareth. If I had uh, Gambit set for bubble, my guys would be constantly trying to bubble that dude and he would be immune and they would just be sitting there, wasting their MP. Oh, Van didn't steal. Oh well. That would have always just been like another tanned hide of snake skin. So yeah, like with having the... I'm just running past the enemies, but Van is still managing to try and do the odd steal here and there. So it's like just free items. Alright, in here. Back to Jahara. Alright, well, let's just go to very quickly check which area the Enkelados is located, because it's one or two, and... Uh, okay, yeah, you're in that area. I can remember there's each of the different hunts, there's two hunts that are in this area, plus a third one which is not accepted currently. Um, oh no, I do have it accepted, but I can't do it, it's way too powerful for me. So there's two hunts in here, uh, and I never remember which one is where. They're, oh no, there's more. There's like a ton of hunts in here. I forget. It's like the yeah. There's like the two that are in the mine. This one plus an additional one. All right. So talk to these dudes over here. All right. Uh, Gareth Velvet. Oh, this dude. Oh, chief. Oh, yeah. Cool. Right, and we get a winged helm. Well, neither of my guys are really using heavy armor, so I don't think that was a very worth it. Oh well. At least the mark was worth XP and uh, LP. Alright, so back out. Still going to be rainy when we uh, go on our little chocobo trip. I could probably force the weather's change to spawn by using the teleport crystal, but uh, that just wastes the time. It is a bit incongruous that like the village is so sunny and beautiful, but then when you get onto the plains, it's like, oh, no. Nah. All right, got Gertie. Cool. We've got a swift mount for free. The first chocobo that you hire here, once you've done them, a bit of the story plot and talk to the chief elder in normal gameplay is free. So we get a chocobo. Hello chocobos. Mine's bigger than yours. Alright, and then we take the chocobo down around the side here. So there's a suspicious area here with a bunch of chocobo tracks. Kind of hinting that you can uh, go through here with a chocobo. There's another couple of shortcuts like this um, around about the game with uh, chocobo prints that you can use as shortcuts. Now I've got to dismount because the chocobo does not auto dismount when trying to go through here. There's no treasures in this area. This area shares the same treasure spawns as the area that the Enkelados is located. So some things can spawn on one side, some things can spawn on the other. Alright, and now we are in the Hen Mines, where we are plagued by a ton of Zubats. Because this is a cave. Alright, so i got to trip the switchboard. Wait for the unskippable cutscene. Showing that... Door has opened, door has closed, indicating the mechanic of this area where you have to open and shut doors to get 
through different places, opening one shuts another, etc., etc., and you oh, steel cook thing then. Nice. You've got to work your way through. All right. So this one, I want to flip this. Run up here. Oh, I think I had things spawn there. Oh well. So normally when you flip the switches there, you get jelly monsters. And I actually want to go through this area because this should be the way to get to the um, mark, which should die pretty swiftly. He hangs out in the middle of this area. Get rid of the bats because they'll just be a nuisance. Alright. I'll have so many crooked fangs after this, won't I? Alright, here. Hello, Mark. And you are the Ishtub. I believe you are named after an Aztec uh, death goddess. Alright, now I need to kill off you, otherwise Varn is going to be useless in this fight. Cool. And now everyone can go ham on the boss. Oh hey, you did a bit of damage. Ah, you teleporting bastard. Oh, it's really annoying when things teleport because that uh, if they tele if they're doing the teleport animation when you attack, your dudes will still attack. More sorting things. Oh, there's a red more too. Uh, get rid of the seeker. Yeah, so it's in the middle of teleport when you attack. Your attacks just whiff. They do zero damage to him. Oh hey, there's a t candle map there. But you are almost dead. Oh, you got slowed right at the end there. Now 120 LP. One dead Ishtar. Let's get the map. Not that really should need it. This area is pretty linear. I don't know if that includes the um, extra area where you can come back late, late game and fight uh, Zodiac. Because that might be included with a um, hen mine's candle. So it's not technically complete this area. Alright, so we just come uh, back here. <laughs> oh, hello jellies. Well, I don't care much about you. Uh, I do care about where that gate switch is though. Alright, gate switch. It won't respawn the jellies and double check which direction I want. I want the uh, westernmost one. So, oh, car. Thank you. Oh, fun is. Alright, so we've got no treasures here. Wow. Did I go in the right way? Nope, I went the wrong way. How did I miss that one? Stellar sense of direction here. Right, this is the one that I want. Onwards. So we might not be getting to Erot Village this time. Given that I'm looking at the time and going, hmm. Still got to get a boss through this area. And get all the way through this area. So I think we'll try, we'll push towards getting to the save crystal. Just avoid these guys. They heal each other. Lovely. Fine can just do his um, stealing thing in the background there. Alright, up here. Because I keep forgetting how much of a hike this area has. Hey, oh, a tourist gem. Nice. That's a bit different. Something a bit different. So we go around here. Down here, more dudes. Ooh, okay, this is the area that I want. I think I want my float um, booties on, but I don't think I have the <laughs> license points for them. Oh, well. I've got stone art, so that's okay. Uh, so this area happens to have the Ishtub. Uh, not the Ishtub, the uh, Paiso Demon. Uh, he also has a spawning condition related to the MP. I'm just keeping the mini map up on this area because. It's a bit of a maze, this area. 
Hey, more crooked fangs. Oh man, I have not managed to trigger a single trap. That's actually. Oh, those lovely four whiffs. Yeah. See, teleporting enemies suck. They always miss your. so often miss your attacks. I, I am actually very impressed that I did not trigger a single trap in that region. Because that region has a whole bunch of stone gas traps, which are just annoying. Alright, so no. Hey, wow, this. Ah, fun. What do they say about traps? Man, the hen mines have got rubbish um, loot spawns for treasure. Hey, I know there aren't that many chest spawns that can spawn in these areas, but normally, like, aside from that big area with the, um, alright, so which way do I head? This way's open, cool. So I head this way. Alright. But yeah, but like, aside from the open area, most of these areas don't have that many treasure spawns, but... Okay, so I can't head there. Hi, dinosaur. Yeah, you, you've got a good amount of LP and XP. Compared to average. Alright, so I can't go that way yet. So I've got to go up and around. Let's just ignore the enemies. Get around here, more dino. I don't care terribly much about you. Alright. I'm going to get through this area. Alright, so this area, this particular section's. It's just a lot of walking around in circle. So I've got no in, I've got no chest spawned here. So you know these guys are pretty sus. Because I've not got anything spawned in there. And yet there's a couple of treasures there. Hmm, wonder what they could be. More mimics. I mean they're a little bit um more uh, hidden than the regular mimic. Alright, so I need to go up here. More levels, nice. But it is kind of funny that because we have the um, treasure chest indicator on the uh, mini map, well, on the overlay map, you know immediately whether or not uh, a certain treasure chest is a treasure chest and is a mimic. Or you get the uh, mimic things in, uh, I believe, the deep hen mines is where they spawn, that are very, very pretty, but they're also very, very not good at hiding the fact that mimics flip the switch. Wait for it to load. Wait for all the jellies to spawn. Alright, you can kill one jelly vash. There you go. That area is a good spot for leveling. Because you get a bucket load of jellies. But I don't care too much about the levels because I have the uh, overpowered... Uh, well, the overpowered weapons, yes, but also uh, because bosses give so much LP and XP, it's like, you don't really need to grind, which is why it's really, it's nice having the bosses grant all that. It means that you can run through areas and you don't have to worry about grinding. You might, oh yeah, around this way, you might do a little bit of extra grinding for LP if you're early game and you just want to get to that really good weapon or armor that you've picked up. Alright, back here. More crooked fangs. Down here. Alright, we've got our teleport. Hmm, we got to this end. I reckon... I reckon we've got just enough time to take out the boss here. Skip the cutscene. Hello boss. You're a big one, aren't you? Tiamat! Ah, oh, disable. Alright, fast forward. <laughs> I have no way to protect against disabled, so all I have to do is sit there and wait for my guys to undisable. Whilst the thing frantically tries to attack my guys. Aha, that's nice, cool. And I'll try and position Barsh at this guy's butt so that. If my dudes are spread out, it means that Disabler 
should only hit one of my guys. So positioning your uh, teammates is actually pretty important for a lot of these large enemies. Because these ones I notice in particular are the ones that are more likely to have the gut level spells, which are AoE and AoE statuses. Seems to be a worm thing. There's a couple of other worms that are really good at that. So only one of my guys is not attacking. Whilst uh, Vaan's just poking it in the backside and... Okay, cool. Now it's Vash's turn. Sorry, Vaan's turn to be disabled. So Vash can attack it. But, you know, it's the HP bar is going down at a decent click. Though this dude, like a lot of other bosses, is going to end up with a lot more defense come its lower uh, HP levels. Breath is still a little bit of damage, nothing terrible. But yeah, with the large enemies, the camera, unless you happen to have someone who's using a ranged weapon, the camera sucks trying to keep them in frame. Even if you got it set as low an angle as possible, which is what I got, it's just, yeah, just trying to rake me do with your claw there. That's fine. I, did I see someone get six hits there? That's nice. So yeah, now I'm only doing like 600 damage there with Barsh instead of, what was it, 12, 1500 earlier? That's how much extra defense these guys get. And now that's the hen mines done. See, this debut, the boss didn't take terribly long. It's not overly difficult boss if, as long as you've either got some good defense uh, and or uh, good attacks and two player, two people, easy. All right, so we've got our free teleport to Erot, 1900 Gil and an Aldebaran. That's a gun, which is not going to be of any use. Neither of my dudes can use guns, and unless it happens to have some ridiculously overpowered base stat, it's not going to matter. Alright, now we're at Erot Village, Land of the Elves, I mean, uh, Vera, totally not Elves. This area is, it is pretty, with all the woodland stuff. And it is interesting, like, you don't spot any male Vera, so you just wonder where they happen to live. Like, are they, are they, we know there are male Vera. Uh, I believe there's male Vera in uh, Final Fantasy XIV because they come from Ivalice or something. I don't know. I'm not quite sure on the law on that. We'll just uh, check out what's in the shop here. We have Tetran, who will also still be on the airship because we haven't done the airship section. Alright, you have a turn soul. Okay. Uh, I did not actually know you could have that in your shop inventory because that's normally a bizarre good only thing. It's expensive and I'm not going to buy it because I've got better weapons. Katetsu, it's decent attack. That's rubbish. Man, the bows suck in this version. Ah, uh, that's rubbish. And okay, cool. Demon shield. Uh, if only I could have shields equipped. That absorption of um, dark is nice. Um, that's not so good. Phoenix down, restore HP, additional 10%. Immunity blind. I kind of like that. Let's take that. Uh, I won't equip it yet. Um, that's no good. Improves chance of scoring multiple hits. Um, well, for stat wise, that's actually. Probably better for Vaan. Um, that's no good. That's pretty rubbish. Oh, hello. Double XP. Well, that's cheap. I'll, Vaan can't learn it, but uh, I'll take two. Won't equip it yet. Uh, double li <laughs> Oh, come on. This is the shop. Double license points. Um, take one. I'm running a little low on monies there. Uh, Ruby Ring, gain MP after defeating foe and equip reflect. Mm -hmm. Immunity stop. Mud shot. Shock moats. Yep. Got cure scourge. Hello. Alright, do I have some good stuff to sell? I don't. didn't pick up a huge amount of stuff in the hen mines, but we'll see. See if I can get enough of that scourge. That's a good magic. 
So it's potential that I might uh, set Varn as a secondary damage to yellow via magic. He's still primarily going to be um, physical damage to yellow because like, his weapon's just that good. But having a backup as a mage would be nice. More bizarre goods. What do we got? 2800? Yeah, I'll buy that. That was rubbish. Alright, Scourge. Because Scourge is super good. It inflicts sap and is AoE and heavy damage. So it's one of the better ones. So let's have a quick double check of what we've got. So we've got the Aeromonia Leaf. So that means that we can press forward into Mount Baromesis. Um, I can go off and do that mark, but I won't because he will be too dangerous. That's the Gill Snapper in the Wet Geezer. That one's all been done. Um, that one is probably what I'll do after getting to Mount Boromsace. So that one I'll have to go to the Cita Uplands, which will be probably hiked from Balfonheim. That's probably the quickest route. I can't use that yet. Uh, that's doing nothing but chilling in the inventory. I can do that check, which is in the Corobri yeah, Corobri no, yeah, Corobri step. That'll be en route to Cita. That's useless at the moment. That's useless at the moment. Uh, I can go out in that area, but I'll die horribly. Useless. That was awesome to get. Uh, useless. Um, oh yeah, that's the one that last move practice. Useless. Uh, currently useless because I have no. I just like and abilities. Let's just sort. I've got healing. Lol, I never taught them cure. <laughs> I got cure and cure gathers, so that's fine. Arise, I've got a Sunaga, so I should try and teach them that soon. Uh, blinder, useful. I should teach that as well. And Shulga. So for offensive magic, I've got Scathe and I've got Scourge. So those two can be both on the same grid. And I'm very, very tempted to find the grid for Varn for that. And I got Hastiger, which I need to beeline. I think Barsh had it on his grid to get that. Reverse, potential useful. And I got uh, Darkra on Varn. And all these abilities, most of them are sucky and useless. Like, inflict charm on, uh, inflict confuse on a foe. That's all it does. And it's not even that high of a rate. But, hello, man. I don't, you don't, you're not in my party. You shouldn't be here. But uh, this will be it for this episode. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, type this out. Yeah.